Welcome back to Dielectric Videos. So if you go back in my videos page on YouTube and you go back almost exactly one year to this day, you'll find a video where I talked about using a USB, a 91 cent USB charger from eBay as my main source of USB power for a week. Well, I actually extended that out to see if there, to do some really crucial long-term uh, reliability testing. And uh, it's been a year later and I've still been using this as my primary source of USB power without any problems, which is incredibly impressive. So I've made a list of all the things I've powered consistently throughout the year with this. And the, in green, I've listed things that really are not power loads in and of themselves, but rather are just energy storage or conversion like power banks or converters. And in pink, I've highlighted specifically which loads have been the most uh, demanding in terms of overall energy consumption. The vast majority of which has gone to my Huawei P9, which of course is my cell phone that I use every day all the time. And uh, is when I have the screen brightness up quite a bit, is fairly power hungry on its own. I also just got this brand new camera, uh, the Canon SL2, which is actually what's filming this right now. It's a super awesome camera that might be getting a review video in the near future for itself, but it has three rechargeable 2S batteries, which I believe are 1,000 or 1,200 milliamp hours each. So pretty beefy batteries, take some, uh, take some energy to recharge. A rechargeable safety flasher I use when I'm running uh, or skateboarding at night. It's uh, got a bunch of big red LEDs in it that flashes and it takes a charge every time you use it. Uh, and then of course, every, every small uh, single cell lithium cell that's come across my workbench has been recharged with this system as well. And that is a very large number of small cells. So lots of little batteries going around that I've charged uh, with the system. And of course, being one who carries a power bank around, uh, I'm always happy to charge other people's devices as well, which ends up taking up a chunk of power, not nearly as much as what I end up using myself, but probably on average, maybe 25% of the power I, of the energy I use goes off to other devices that I didn't put on this list because I don't remember all of the ones that are there. But needless to say, lots and lots of stuff I've run on this. So in terms of performance, this has held up extremely well. It still is able to produce its consistent 350 milliamps when supplied with uh, 240 volt mains. The regulation is about what it was before. Uh, on the low end under full load, it gets down to about four and a half volts and uh, unloaded, it sticks around at about 5.8 volts. Uh, it's a little on the high side, but most devices will tolerate it just fine. Uh, and the, I know I said in my earlier video that I was gonna stick to primarily consumer gear like power banks and, and charging systems, but I did make one slight adjustment just uh, as a matter of convenience. I got this 10,000 milliamp hour power bank and modified it with direct access to the battery via a barrel connector. And what this allows me to do is use the TP4056, which is a charge, a lithium cell charge control chip to actually recharge the cells in this at the same time as I draw power out of it. This is called pass-through charging. And although it does have its own set of problems for maintaining cell health over the long term, the TP4056 solves a lot of those problems by doing a windowed maximum charge. It'll charge up to 4.2 volts and then uh, it'll actually stop charging until it gets down to about 4.1 volts and it'll kick it back in. So that actually works quite well for uh, battery longevity. And additionally, this chip will self-regulate its charge current to whatever the uh, USB source can supply all the way down to about 50 milliamps. And that makes it perfect for this application because although under full capacity it will charge up to one amp, it will limit itself down to whatever the charger can provide and still charge reliably. So with all of this in mind, I, uh, have, I wanna actually take this apart because I have not looked inside this since when I last made a video about it. And if you're interested in actually seeing a full reverse engineering of the circuit and a full teardown, there was a previous video before my uh, one week of charging video that, uh, where I actually took this apart, reverse engineered it and characterized it with a dynamic load. But uh, now that I have this in hand I, and, uh, and it's been one year, I'd like to take it apart and see if there's any signs of thermal decay or thermal degradation inside. I know for the first week and week and a half that I was using it, under full load, it would start to smell a bit like hot enamel from the transformer. So I'm curious to see if any discoloration or other signs of overheating have occurred.
I've zoomed in here so you can see a bit better. Take the screw out here. And once again, I observed this when I, the first time I took it apart, the screw is slightly rusty. And this has not been exposed to any moisture, and it was like that when I first got it, so I guess maybe they're reusing screws? I don't know. Let's see if I can get this open. There's the wires going to the Euro plug. And here comes the board. Back side of it looks about the same as before. And yeah, not a whole lot has changed in there. The capacitors look roughly the same. The transformer looks okay. I don't see any burning or signs of trouble with the transformer. And the transistor, which is also the other part that uh, generates a fair bit of heat, looks pretty normal. Yeah, so uh, I would say, from a visible perspective, this thing has fared pretty well. Not too much damage over the last uh, year of pretty uh, rough service use. I mean, this was basically at 100% load for at least 75% of the time, and uh, regularly, a few times a week, it would probably charge for a 30-hour period or a 40-hour period uh, at full load nonstop. So. For being such a simple circuit with such inexpensive components, that's done very, very well. So I'm quite satisfied with that. So I guess at this point I'll put it back together and maybe continue using it, or maybe find another project uh, to use it for, but it's kind of a cool thing that it's lasted this long. I mean, this is, this is something that I was hoping if it lasted a long time, I might be able to actually spec in some low-powered uh, load applications where economy and, and price was a major factor and with uh, the reliability and service life I've gotten out of this I think that would be a pretty good call assuming that you can get consistently this same circuit design with these same components from the eBay sellers. But since this seems like a pretty common uh, and pretty much frequently replicated circuit I think it's probably a safe bet to use as a, as a 5 volt source for low powered applications. I mean, anything up to 350 milliamps if you're specking it at 240 volts, or up to uh, about 100 milliamps if you're specking it at 120, uh, and it will do the job for you. So, uh, yeah, check out that other video on the reverse engineering and the teardown, and if you're interested in checking out the rest of the, uh, of the things I powered with it or how I set up my previous charging uh, video, you can check that out as well. So thanks for watching Dielectric videos, and I will see you next time.